Sispundra for IELTS without effort and X IELTS examiner. C. Most of the times uh, on the YouTube or on, you can say, uh, on the various social platforms, generally you'll find the videos which tell you to do this thing and that thing. And you know, sometimes uh, they don't tell you what not to pay attention to. So this video is going to be special in which as an examiner, yeah, I'm an exiles examiner. I am Mrs. Anita Kundra and I take online classes. So I'll be telling you certain things which you should not be bothered about. So that is something new. And I will do it in Hindi because most of you want them uh, things to be done in Hindi also. But of course, English also. All over the world, there are uh, people who see my videos and get, you know, benefit of this. So, you know, there is, I'm going to tell you 10 things that you should not be bothered about. Yeah. And that also in the speaking module. So, you must see through the last. All the, and the last three, four are very, you know, different. You'll find that, oh, I have been, you know, just bothered unnecessarily. So, the first one is that you don't, on the test date, of course, you don't have to be bothered how you have done on the part two. See, when you are giving your test, in part two, what you do is, you just, you know, you're not able to do the cue card properly. Maybe you are drawing up or something goes wrong. And during the test, you get confused, jittery, you know, confused ho jate ho, you know, because aapka part two theek nahi gaya. So then what happens is this will affect your part three. So don't be bothered about part two. I'm not saying that you should not prepare for it, but not on the test date. And even if it goes wrong on that day. Then the whole of your exam will go wrong there. So don't do that. Now the second is just move on. Okay. So sometimes you know you are saying me and messaging. Oh ma'am even in my live I'm on Instagram. I when I came when I was live there was a question ma'am I committed a grammar mistake. So one grammar mistake or two grammar mistakes, you know, will not reduce your score. The examiner is going to, you know, rate you on all the three parts of the speaking module. Aapko ek, mis ek mistake ya do teen grammar mistakes ki hai to wrong nahi hai. Haan, ab aap ek mein ko question poochha hai live mein, mere Instagram mein. Imam grammar kitni important hai. Dekho, agar to, if you want a higher band, then you should of course have a very good grammar. That goes without saying. But if your grammar is such that it does not obscure the meaning, the meaning is clear, then you can get a six band. And then depending upon the grammatical accuracy, you will get a 6.5 also. So it all depends, you know, on your uh, strength. So if, if you are a kind of uh, not good in grammar, doesn't mean that the whole thing is going to come down. Okay, then, you know, you sometimes ask me that, ma'am, should I do the self-correction? Now, self-correction can be done depending upon your strength and weakness. Now, there could be two strengths, your fluency and your grammar. Suppose you go wrong on your grammar and you have a very good command on grammar, then what should be done? Then you should correct your grammar. 
because that will give a good impression to the examiner. But if you are not good at grammar and the meaning is not being obscured or the meaning is uh, of the sentence is clear, then continue. That means your fluency is your forte. Aapka fluency acha hai. Right? So, if your fluency is your forte, then do not correct yourself. But of course, if uh, you are good at grammar, then you can correct and it will give you a good band in the GRA. Otherwise, you will have a good band in the fluency. So, try to play on these things. Got that? Okay. Now, the next one, that is the third one. You know, somebody is saying like, even now in the live, they were asking, ma'am, I get nervous. It is very normal to get nervous, to have butterflies uh, in your stomach. It's okay. Uh, oh, ma'am, if I would not be nervous, then I would give a exam very nicely. It is very normal to get nervous, child. Don't have that misconception that you will have. Not be nervous. Only then you can, you know, give up the exam. So don't be bothered about that. Now the fourth one is, yeah, the examiner is making notes. And, you know, you have seen that some three or four or five. What is the examiner? You know, as an examiner, I can answer you. What is the examiner writing? The examiner is not writing your bands. No, he must be writing the time slot or something that how many questions he has asked or how many topics he has covered. No, there are certain parameters which the examiner has to take into consideration before or during the test. You know, there are certain things that have to be kept in mind. Okay, then, okay, then you say me ma'am the examiner was very formal, you know. He was reading, you know, he was speaking as if he is reading from the newspaper. You know, so they are doing that in order to just make you comfortable, the candidate, so that everything that he speaks is clear to the candidate. After all, we want some language from the candidate, right? So he could be like, let's talk about hairstyles. Let's talk about jewelry. He would be saying like that. So that is not a problem. So if he is a formal, because he wants that everything should be clear to you. So you don't have to be formal. So don't bother about the formal style of the examiner during the exam. Now this is again, you have not to be bothered about. That was the fifth one. And now the sixth one. Yes. You know, the examiner is in, ma'am was interrupting me. Oh, I must have gone wrong. No, the examiner is interrupting you doesn't mean that you have to think that you are wrong. Don't be bothered. This is again one point that you should not be bothered. Because, you know, he has to look at many things. What is the topics, how many topics he has covered, then the number of questions he has asked, you know. And then, you know, if if you, if you he doesn't interrupt and you go on, then the number of questions he has to ask, which are mandatory, will go down. And then he is also, you know, seeing what band to give you. And therefore, in the part three, he is going to interrupt you and ask you more challenging questions. And that, does, that doesn't mean that you will get a low band. Okay. He has to ask some challenging questions because he wants to give you a higher band. Whatever it is. Is that clear? Now, then you say, uh, you know, you said me the, uh, you know, the answers some, sometimes would become long. Okay. Then, you continue with your answers. You don't stop. That is the examiner's problem. He will stop you when he wants to stop and ask you the next question. You just, when he interrupts, 
Just focus on the next question and answer it. So don't be bothered about this. Then the eighth point is that please don't be bothered about your appearance. See, if you are going to look, you know, very classy or you're going to wear expensive clothes or you're going to have a, you know, what? Have a, a tie and a coat and all that. You're going to be rated higher. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. And especially for the, you know, uh, ladies, you know, you know, you don't have to wear a heavy jewelry or something. Don't get distracted. It is a paper after all. Then the eye contact and the body language. See, you don't have to slump down and sit like a lazy person. But then, you know, you don't have to be very stiff and seeing in the eyes of the examiner. So many YouTubers says, oh, you should have a eye contact. Otherwise, you'll get a low band. It's not like that. So if you in the in the part two, suppose in the exam, uh, in the part two, I'll give an example. So if it is written, if you're writing some points, you can very much see in the paper and give your answer. Why can't you? You know, it's very normal. So, you, you know, even if you want to see a bit this side or that side or you feel like that, it's okay. You can have an eye contact and do that way. So, it is not, uh, you know, important. Again, that you won't have to be bothered. And then, oh, ma'am, you know, the ninth one which I told you the last one, the examiner's attitude was so unfriendly. He was so rude. See, we are all human beings. So in the morning since evening, we, you know, we are doing it and we do it to the best of our capability. But you don't have to be bothered about it. Because after all, the examiner is going to see the kind of language, the range of language, what you are using. Okay. So if he's friendly or not friendly or, you know, he was rude or whatever, don't bother about it. Don't bother during your test date. Don't bother. No? And then sometimes, you know, you try to impress the examiner. Now, how do you ex uh, try to express, uh, you know, sorry, impress the examiner? By having an accent. You know, if I try speaking like a native speaker, that Mrs. Mrs. Kundra has a very good accent and then she can be an examiner. Don't have an accent. Even native speakers commit mistakes. So having an accent doesn't mean that you're going to be rated higher. But in our YouTube video, I've seen all, you know, some trainers having false uh, kind of, uh, you know, accent it's not important your language is important then your speed is not important if you're speaking at a greater speed you know you're getting a greater band or a higher band sorry so that that is not there and then you're going trying to impress the examiner with some vocabulary from nowhere you know out of the blue which you have not used at all and then you think that you up vocal loge use and then you're going to impress the examiner. It's not like that. Because you, it is going to, after all, you know, your score up down jayega. Don't impress the examiner. And now in your comments, tell me the best myth or the tip that you found. I want in your comments. Please cooperate with me. And of course, there are so many of your friends or relatives who would want this video and please share with them. I really want to help them. And of course, the best thing you can do is press that bell icon so that you get subscribed and get notifications. Please do that because this is the genuine guidance coming from an exiles examiner. And I'll be waiting for your comments, please. A shout out to all those who are commenting. It really means a lot to me. I will be waiting for your comments, like which tip you like, which thing you're now not going to be bothered about and what myth I broke in this video. 
so that I come to know it has been useful to you. And of course, if you want any guidance, I have online classes only and I have the number there. You can see here and you can contact me. I, ha I also have materials for the writing module. You can also take those materials. There's no problem at all. Let me know if I can be of any assistance to you. And thank you and God bless you all.